Good morning. I'm Judy Glenny, and I'm here to talk to you about making some plans. I have here what's called a lesson plan book. Now, if there are any teachers listening to this, you are probably very familiar with this. It has little sections for you to fill in places for your plans for the next day, the next week, the next month. When I was in college, they taught us how to make out these lesson plans. My degree was in secondary education. So I got pretty familiar with making out these lesson plans. Now, one of my first teaching uh, assignments uh, was to teach first through ninth grade physical education. And I thought I was pretty well prepared. Now I had, even though my degree was in secondary education, I had some experience in elementary during my student teaching time. So I got out my plan book, I made out all my plans, and I thought I was pretty well prepared for this first teaching assignment. Well, I found out something a little bit different. I used up my whole week's lesson plan the first day on those first graders. So much for being prepared. Well, I knew that I was in trouble after that time, but I did succeed a little bit more in making out some lesson plans. Although making out lesson plans wasn't my forte, and I, I did master most of them, I did start to make up plans for my life and backup plans. I like being in control and having a plan is definitely being in control. My career plan was set pretty early on. Fortunately, I had great physical education teachers that really encouraged me to follow that direction. They saw that I did have an aptitude in that per, uh, respective area, so they encouraged me to, to go into that area. Sports were a family affair. Uh, my mom and dad uh, played tennis with my brother and I. My dad taught me how to play all sorts of sports with a ball, especially. So I got pretty familiar with, with sports. We skied as a family. So definitely sports was a big part of my life. You name the sport and I either competed in it or tried it in one sort or fashion. Now, I do draw the line at the extreme sports. I don't do uh, cliff diving or bungee jumping or anything like that, but anything else I pretty much uh, have tried. Now, my mom taught PE too. However, she did admit later on that she only taught PE so she could have her summers off to play softball. But I knew I would enjoy teaching uh, physical education and I did go on to earn my degree in that. So by the time I was in high school, I knew I had a plan to do just that. And I did have some help in making other plans as well. You see, growing up, my parents didn't not only took us out to play sports, but they saw to it that we had spiritual training as well. They took us to church and to Sunday school and made sure that we had a good spiritual upbringing. Well, I remember one incident. I was about 10 years old. I found myself sitting in church camp. Now, sitting in a church camp at that age wasn't unusual, but what was unusual was the fact that I was actually listening. That was unusual, but the speaker really got my attention because he said that God had a plan for each one of our lives. He created us and knew us best, and he had a plan that each of us could, could achieve if we had a relationship with Jesus Christ and become a child of God. And I thought, well, being a child of God, I thought I had that pretty well covered because mom's a Christian, dad's a Christian. Well, Christians beget Christians, don't they? And I found out differently. Being born into a Christian family, or even just going to church, doesn't make you a Christian, even more so than being uh, going into a garage makes you a car. So I found out I had to make that decision for myself. Well, he quoted some verses that really caught my attention. For one, it says in the Bible, which is God's word to us, that says, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now I look back on my vast experience of life 
And I thought, I wasn't really a bad person. Sure, I maybe told a lie here and there, and I probably disobeyed my parents from time to time, but nothing really bad that would make me a really bad sinner. But I couldn't get away from that little word, all. Well, then he quoted another part of the Bible, excuse me, another part of the Bible, which I had heard before, but he said it in a very different way, which again, got my attention. John 3, 16, and he quoted it like this. For God so loved the world, and then he paused and he said, put your name in place of the world. And I did. That he gave, and he went on to, to quote some more of the verse, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, and again he paused and he said, put your name in, in place of whosoever. And I did. Then he went on to finish the verse that said, believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Wow. Well, he went on to, to say that if you didn't, and if you didn't take God up on this invitation, that there was an alternative, which was spending eternity with uh, in hell, which was a very real place. And I thought, wow, that doesn't sound good. So I listened even more intently. And then he prayed a prayer inviting us to accept Jesus Christ as our Savior and become that child of God. And I did. I remember that very special day when I realized that I did become a child of God and two things actually happened. Number one, I knew that I was going to spend eternity with God in heaven, but then I also got to thinking I could now experience God's plan for my life. Well, I kind of kept that last part in my mind as I entered my, my teen years. What was God's plan for my life and my career? Well, I figured again, since he created me, he knew me best. And I figured I better follow his plan. And going into teaching, I thought was his plan for my life. And obviously I did complete my plan to become a teacher and have enjoyed it very, very much. But not all my plans were as successful. Let me tell you about some that did or did not come to pass for my life. I remember telling my mother about my future plans for my husband. Oh, I had some wonderful criteria all laid out. Number one, he had to be no more than two years older than me. Oh, he definitely had to be a skier. And he had to be at least, least six feet tall. And I did not want a redhead. Now, I remind you, this was in high school. Between my junior years in college, I volunteered to work at a Christian organization in California. Now, volunteering meant that you were assigned uh, a position on their staff, which meant maybe you were maintenance yard or a cleaning crew or uh, washing dishes. Well, mine happened to be on the cleaning crew. And part of my assignment to clean was the weight room. One day, some of my fellow co-workers asked me if I wouldn't go down to the weight room to ask the fellow in charge if they could use the area for, I think they were going to do some kind of exercise, jazzercise or something like that, when they weren't using the facility. So I said, sure, I'll go down and I'll talk to the person in charge. I went down to meet this person, but he wasn't there. But another member of the weightlifting team was there. Well, we got to chatting a little bit, and just before we parted, he offered me to teach me some things about weight training. I was absolutely flabbergasted, really? I thought, wow, this is definitely something I was interested in. I had always been impressed with strength and had always wanted to do something with that, but you know, girls didn't do much of that at that time. But this really intrigued me. And I took him up on that offer. And I did go back. And he did teach me some things about weight training. Wow, I could see marriage in my plan book. <laughs> but I thought, 
this guy was the only single member on the weightlifting team, and I knew he would not give me a second look. So I just kind of erased that from my plan book, as it were. But like I say, I did go down and, and uh, take him up on his offer, and he thought I had some real talent. I had some ability in that area, and he really encouraged me. So much so that he encouraged me in other ways. Well, after a year of all that encouragement, he asked me to marry him. Wow, I did not see that in my plan, but well, I did, but I erased it. But I'm sure glad God put it in his plan book for me. Well, in fact, I didn't learn until a little bit later, much later, that marrying a weightlifter was in his plan book. Wow, I kind of thought, wow, I wonder what his fellow weightlifters thought about that, marrying a weightlifter. Well, I'm like I say, I'm glad that it was in his plan, but I couldn't be happier with the choice that God had for me and put that in my plan book. Well, I'll, let's go back to now. Remember my criteria for my future husband? Let's see how that worked out, <clears throat> okay? Uh, two years older, no more than two years older. Well, he is, he's six years older. And the skier, I think he said he had been on skis once in his life. And six feet tall, almost maybe, even 5'10". And yes, guess what? He does have red hair. Well, I couldn't be happier again because of all the experiences we had on our, in our life together. Well, I did not know what that first experience in the weight room was really going to bring about. I didn't know that the years to come would be really a change in my life. I started training seriously, and because of that, we actually were instrumental in starting the sport of weightlifting for women. Well, through the years, I have been fortunate enough to win many national and international championships in the sport. I also became involved in officiating, which again, I had the opportunity to travel around the world officiating competitions up to and including the Olympic Games. Sure didn't see that in my plan book. I did have long range plans though. I was going to live in Oregon to be close to my parents as I was especially close to my dad. And of course, as kids came along, I wanted them to be close to their grandparents as I was. So I thought, uh, being raised in Central Oregon, uh, we were going to live, live there, according to my plan, that is. Well, neither one came to pass. Unfortunately, my dad passed away just two short years after we were married, and we ended up living in New Mexico for 17 years before moving back to the Northwest. And my plans for kids changed as well. I knew I wouldn't have time for raising children while I was competing, so we put off having children until my weightlifting career started to wane. Well, we were married 18 years, and during those 18 years, I became the best parent ever. And I thought putting off parenthood until later would prepare me a lot better for parenthood. Nothing prepares you for this, let me clue you. But as you know, as soon as I became pregnant, I began making plans for him and for me. We all do, whether we admit it or not. And some plans came to be and some didn't. I had plans for him being an athlete. Well, that was natural, coming from two athletic parents. And we did, we got him uh, enrolled in soccer, which he became very good at. And I thought, well, I'd raise a ski buddy since obviously, remember, my husband was not a skier. So we did. I introduced him to skiing at a very early age, and we both took up snowboarding a little later on. And as he grew up, we were pretty close and could talk about most anything. So when the talking started to diminish, and, I, I, and it started to go into a few more arguments, I thought, well, that's just natural teen, teen stuff just growing up. But when these arguments really started to get heavy and we started to drift apart, that was definitely not in my plan book. 
But I still started to make plans and lots of backup plans. When things got serious with concerning his gender confusion, we started to make plans, plans A, B, C, and B. Plan A was to make other living arrangements for him. Well, plan A didn't work, so we went to plan B, which, which was to get him professional counseling. Not so much. The counselor said there was no problem, and if there was, we were the problem. Go to plan C, D, and on down the line, there was none. I suddenly knew that I had no control whatsoever. And I felt like that first experience when I was teaching, when I used all my plans for that first week and that first day of school, that's what it felt like. I realized I had no control, and since I had no plan whatsoever to fall back on, I started going down the what-if road of fear, and that began to set in big time. The best I can describe it is like I felt like I was drowning and each day was just another gasp for breath before trying to get another bit, bit of air before going underwater. The what ifs of possible scenarios that could happen were the waves that were continually crashing over my head. Remember how I said that God had a plan for me? Well, because things were going pretty good up until this point, I didn't look for any other way other than my plans, I would pray and ask God not to ask him for his plans, but I asked him to validate my plans, but didn't see really what his plan was. But he had to get my attention so there would be no mistake who really was in control. Well, because I didn't have a plan and really couldn't at this point, I really had to trust God that he knew best because he knew what was going to happen and he could take charge of all of those things. And I knew he loved me because I was his child. And as a father, he did know best. But a lot of times our earthly fathers as a child, we don't know what our earthly fathers or why our earthly fathers do the things they do. And it's the same thing with God. Things did progress from bad to worse until my worst fear was realized. Just a couple months before his 20th birthday, my only son took his life. My plans for a simple, loving family came crashing down, crumbled all at once. Not to mention my other dreams that I had for me and for him. Well, certainly not in my plan book, but I knew it was in God's plan. I will be honest, and I still ask from time to time why, but that's becoming less and less of an issue as I continue to trust God as my father and because he knows what he's doing. He has a promise in the Bible that says, all things work together for good to those, to those that love God. You see, as long as things were going pretty good for me, I thought my plans were good and I had no need to look elsewhere. But when things started to go wrong, really wrong, you start to realize there's got to be a better way because obviously your plans didn't work out. Hindsight's always 2020, and I did. I, I know I realized that I made some bad decisions and did some, some things that I, I knew I shouldn't have, but I can't go back and change those. And I know many of you have been pretty satisfied with the plans you've made in the plan book of your life, and things have gone pretty well your way. Now, don't get me wrong, making plans is good, and we should, but let's keep a couple things in mind. Can we really control all the things in our life? And what happens if something re excuse me, really rocks our world? The answer is no. We can't control all the circumstances in our life, and we have to learn to change those what ifs into even ifs. It was the hardest lesson that I had to learn and I couldn't have done it alone. It was only through my relationship with Jesus Christ that I was able to go through those circumstances that God took me through. He did take the fear out of those what ifs 
Now I'd like to ask you the greatest question, the most important question that you'll ever have to answer in your life. Where do you plan to spend eternity? The answer will not only affect your eternal destiny, but your life here on earth as well. And that's the question I had to answer sitting there in that camp so many years ago. During the course of his talk, that missionary told us of a plan that God had, it, had for us from the very beginning. Remember the verse, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God? Well, that means that we can't be in a relationship with God, but he loved us so much that he had that plan covered. He had something already in mind to take care of that situation, but it cost him dearly. Because sin carries a death penalty, someone had to pay that price. And that's where God's plan comes in. He would send his only son, Jesus, who was perfect and sinless, to pay that death penalty for us. He was the only one qualified to do that because he was perfect man and perfect God. Jesus Christ died on the cross so we wouldn't have to. He paid that death penalty for us. But the most fantastic thing was that after three days in the grave, he rose from the dead to open up that opportunity for us to have that relationship with God. And the best part is, again, like I mentioned, now we can have that opportunity to know God's plan for us personally. And we can have that relationship with him. The Bible puts it very simply. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Saved from eternal death and saved to a wonderful eternal relationship with God. And you, can, you have to make that decision for yourself. What are you going to do with Jesus Christ? You have to make that decision based on what he said. Because of what he said, you have to make a decision whether he is a liar, a lunatic, or who he said he was, the Savior that died for you. Now, if you're here without Christ, without eternal life, I would make this offer to you. Take that verse. Make it your own. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And you may question, believe what? Believe that Jesus Christ is the unique person of the universe. He is perfect God and perfect man. And he took on willingly your place on that cross, dying in your place, so that you could have that relationship with Jesus Christ. Won't you do that today? Very simple. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. In the other verse, I'll quote again, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, that means you, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that means you, believeth on him, should not perish, but have everlasting life. It's there for the taking. Won't you make that decision today? It's there. He's waiting for you to have that wonderful relationship with you so that you can enjoy the plan that he has for you and complete your plan book for your life. And I'd just like to close in a word of prayer. Father, I do thank you for the payment that Jesus Christ did on that cross, opening up the opportunity for us to have that relationship with you. And I pray that if there was one here that had not ever made that decision, that they would make it before they leave now. In Jesus' name, amen. One last thing. <clears throat> I have um, the rest of the story is found in my book, Mom, I'm a Girl, which expounds a lot of the story. And you can get that through my website. The website's very easy. It's just Judy Glenny, all one word, J-U-D-Y-G-L-E-N-N-E-Y dot -E -E com. You can get the book there. Thank you.